This is Adam Carter, the Director of Product Management at SolidFire. I'm going to demonstrate just real quickly a preview of the SIOC QoS integration from SolidFire. Here we have a vSphere 5.5 web client with the SolidFire vCP plugin installed. We're going to go to the plugin. We can see we have one cluster with two data stores that have been provisioned out of it. These data stores are about 500 gig and 600 gig respectively, and I have a few VMs on them already running I.O. But here's the important part that I'm going to show in this demo, is the QoS SIOC automation feature. If we simply enable this feature, as described here, what this feature does is automatically adjust quality of service settings on the SolidFire SAN to match the SIOC settings on the individual VMs and VMDKs. Everything's automatic based on what's set on those, including even the burst amount, which is here set to a default of four, four times as much as the maximum IO allowed on the VMs. We're gonna enable it on two data stores here to demonstrate it. So after we've enabled it, the first thing that we're gonna go look at is the actual data stores themselves. If we go look at the data stores, we can see that they have had SIOC enabled on them and have had their congestion threshold set to five milliseconds. This is the minimum allowed setting and is much more fitting for an all flash array like a solid fire system. If we go to data store B, we see the same status. SIOC has been enabled with a five millisecond congestion threshold. We can now go to our actual cluster and our VMs. We've got these six virtual machines here, three on each data store. And if we go look at each one, we can see by looking at their settings that they have SIOC configured and they have shares set to a custom of 200. Now shares in this context means to the SolidFire system minimum IOPS. What do you want the minimum IOPS for this VM to be? And limit IOPS means exactly that. What do you want the maximum IOPS to be? And as we had shown in the setting of it, the maximum would be this 2000. The burst would automatically set, be set to four times this amount on the volumes. So now that I look at that, all of these VMs are the same. They each have 200 and 2000. So the 200 and 2000 per VM if I go look at quality of service settings now on the system, they are automatically set to 600, 6,000, and 24,000. And that is based on three VMs with 200 as minimum, three VMs with 6,000 as maximum, three VMs with 2,000 as, ma as their maximum, and then 24,000 as the four times a multiplier of that. So we can see these both have 6,000 IOPS is their max. So now the system underneath, the storage underneath, is going to maintain this max IOPS and defend this minimum IOPS even during upgrades or other disturbances, maybe a drive failed, maybe a noisy neighbor, or other apps being added to the system. And in this way, we can automatically ensure that not only is SIOC defending the IO of each VM, but all the way down to the storage layer that's being enforced. So if we go look at the actual storage layer, we can see we're doing about 6,000 IOPS on that volume that that data store is on. And same for this data store. So the two data stores are pretty much equal right now. So what we want to show though is if we change something about this environment because this is automated, let's say we take uh, this VM and we're going to migrate it. So we're going to migrate this VM so that it's on a different data store. We're going to move it to data store A And we'll let that migrate, and while it's migrating, we'll see a couple of things. One, even though I was at my maximum I.O., so I'm absolutely pushing this volume to its limit, I can go and see that I'm going to be allowed to go faster than that. And the reason for this is because the way that data is being moved is through an xcopy command through VAI. And even though VAI is controlled by quality of service on the SolidFire system, it is weighted differently than normal I.O. 
so that xcopy commands can get much more work done even under the same QoS settings and still have controls and quality of service so they can't do so much that they can hurt the overall performance of the VMs in an unexpected way but you still expect an xcopy to go much much faster so essentially they still are IO but it's weighted differently in the system so that allows the IO to go quickly and still be controlled by quality of service. So as that VM is being migrated, the thing to pay attention to here is in a world without this kind of automation, somebody would actually have to think through the problem of, oh, I've, I've moved a VM that was supposed to be getting 2000 IOPS um, and I've moved it from one data store to another. So now what do I do about performance? You know, in, in normal storage configurations, the performance of all the other VMs on data store A they would have to go down in performance to be able to give any room for I.O. for the new VM that just went there. So everybody would have to get affected by that I.O. And also now you'd have extra I.O. on the data store that you took the VM off of. And in this configuration, that's no longer true. What we can do is just move VMs around or place VMs at will. And as long as we define their SIOC settings to be what we need them to be, the system underneath that will just react to it and move the IO to where it needs to be. So now data store B only needs 400 and 4,000 because it has two VMs with 200 and 2,000. And data store A needs 800 and 8,000 because it has four VMs, because we move those around. Those settings were completely automatic. I didn't change any of this here. This was actually changed on the storage system behind the scenes. If we go look at the storage behind the scenes here, we'll see the quality of service settings have, have moved back here also. This VC plugin is you know, essentially an alternative management console for the same storage system. And when we go look at the actual storage, we can see the net effect of that. So this volume is now going slower than it used to be. It's only around, you know, bubbling around 4,000 to 5,000 IOPS. And this one's at 8,000 IOPS now which is expected we turned its IO up to allow it to have that additional VM. And this one's now down to 4,000. So we've now off weighted these two so that they're different and we get different speeds out of them. But the VMs essentially then, even though I moved, I changed a VM from here to data store A, the IO moved with it. So I no longer even have to think through like, oh no, how much IO do I need for this VM? I just place VMs wherever I need them on the system and let the storage system defend the correct IO settings for that. And this is all controlled through through vSphere. So I don't have to have, you know, a bunch of manual operations or even some other special configuration. I can just utilize the, the fact that the plugin exists and go start changing SIOC settings so long as SIOC automation is turned on on the individual volumes. Well, that's a quick demonstration of how the SIOC integration works with SolidFire Quality of Service. Thank you very much.